In this video, we will prepare adjusting entries for deferrals. To defer means to postpone or delay. So these adjusting entries are recognizing both revenues and expenses that were initially deferred or postponed. Deferrals are costs or revenues that are recognized at a date later than the point when cash was originally exchanged. The two types of deferrals are prepaid expenses and unearned revenues. Companies make adjusting entries for deferred expenses, also known as prepaid expenses, to record the portion that was incurred during the period. And for deferred revenues, also referred to as unearned revenue, to record services performed during the period. Before we talk about deferrals, let's review some transactions from the previous chapter. On October 2nd, Sierra purchased equipment by paying $5,000 in cash, so we need to debit equipment and credit cash for $5,000. Sierra also received a $1,200 cash advance from a client. Sierra received cash for guided services that it expects to complete in the future. Sierra has a liability to the customer until they provide the service. We need to debit cash and credit unearned service revenue for $1,200. When Sierra provides the service or the guided tour, at that point they can record the revenue. Sierra paid $600 for a one-year insurance policy that will expire next year on September 30th. As a result, we debited prepaid insurance, an asset account, and credited cash. Sierra also purchased three months of supplies on account. This transaction increases both an asset, supplies, because they are available for future use, as well as accounts payable, which is a liability. In each of these four transactions, we deferred or postponed either revenue or an expense. We need to make an adjusting entry to record the portion of expenses that was incurred and record any revenue earned during the period. Companies record payments of expenses that will benefit more than one accounting period as assets. These prepaid expenses or prepayments are expenses paid in cash before they are used or consumed. When expenses are prepaid, an asset account is increased or debited to show the service or benefit that the company will receive in the future. Examples of common prepayments are insurance, supplies, advertising, and rent. In addition, companies make prepayments when they purchase buildings and equipment. Prepaid expenses are costs that expire either with the passage of time, such as rent and insurance, or through use, such as office supplies. The expiration of these costs does not require daily entries, but rather companies postpone the recognition of such cost until they prepare financial statements. The adjusting entry records the expense for the current accounting period and adjusts the asset account. The entry for prepaid expenses results in an increase or a debit to an expense account and a decrease or a credit to an asset account. The purchase of supplies such as paper and envelopes results in an increase or a debit to an asset account. During the accounting period, the company uses supplies. Rather than record supplies expense as the supplies are used, companies recognize the supply expense at the end of the accounting period. At the end of the accounting period, the company counts the remaining supplies. The difference between the unadjusted balance in the supplies or the asset account and the actual cost of supplies on hand represents the supplies used or an expense for that period. In October, Sierra purchased supplies costing 
a physical count of the inventory at the close of business on October 31st reveals that $1,000 worth of supplies are still on hand. So the cost of the supplies used is $1,500, and that's simply the difference between $2,500 and $1,000. This use of supplies decreases the asset supplies. The other half of that transaction is to increase an expense account supplies expense. After the adjustment, the asset account supplies shows a balance of $1,000, which is equal to the cost of supplies on hand. Supplies expense shows a balance of $1,500, which equals the cost of supplies used in October. Companies purchase insurance to protect themselves from losses due to fire, theft, and unforeseen events. Insurance is typically paid in advance, often for multiple months. The cost of insurance paid in advance is recorded as an increase or a debit in the asset account prepaid insurance. The adjusting entry increases insurance expense and decreases prepaid insurance for the cost of insurance that has expired during the period. Sierra Corporation paid $600 for a one-year fire insurance policy. Coverage began on October 1st. The prepaid insurance account shows a balance of $600 in the October 31st trial balance. Insurance of $50 expires each month. That is calculated by taking the $600 premium and dividing it by the 12 months that it covers. The expiration of prepaid insurance decreases the asset account or prepaid insurance. The adjusting entry debits insurance expense and credits or decreases prepaid insurance. Prepaid insurance shows a balance of $550, which represents the unexpired cost for the remaining 11 months of coverage. At the same time, the balance in the insurance expense equals the insurance cost that has expired in the month of October. Many business transactions affect more than one time period. A company typically owns a variety of assets that have long lives, such as buildings and equipment. These assets will be used for many years. It would not make sense to expense the full cost of the building or equipment at the time of purchase because these assets will be used for many periods or years. The period of service is referred to as the useful life. Because a building is expected to be of service for many years, it is recorded as an asset. Companies allocate a portion of this cost as an expense during each period of the asset's useful life. Depreciation is the process of allocating the cost of an asset to an expense over its useful life. Let's assume a company purchases a truck for $60,000 with a useful life of six years. This company will allocate a portion of this cost or $10,000 as an expense for the next six years or over its useful life. As they are using this truck to generate revenue, they will also recognize depreciation expense of $10,000 each year. One very important point to understand is depreciation is an allocation concept, not a valuation concept. Depreciation simply allocates an asset's cost to the periods in which it is used. Depreciation does not attempt to report the actual change in the value of the asset. For Sierra Corporation, Assume that depreciation on the equipment is $480 a year, or $40 per month. This will result in adjusting entry that debits depreciation expense and credits accumulated depreciation equipment. Rather than decrease or credit the asset account directly, we use a contra asset account. This account keeps track of the total amount of depreciation expense taken over the life of the asset. 
Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account that offsets the equipment account. The normal balance of this account is a credit. Using a contra account presents both the original cost of the equipment and the total cost that has expired to date. Book value is the difference between the cost of any depreciable asset and its related accumulated depreciation. The book value of Sierra's equipment is $4,960, and that's simply the difference between the equipment cost of $5,000 and the depreciation, the accumulated depreciation of $40. To summarize, companies record payments of expenses that will benefit more than one accounting period as assets. Examples of common prepayments are insurance, supplies, and depreciation. Prior to adjustment, assets are overstated and expenses are understated. An adjusting entry for prepaid expenses results in an increase or a debit to an expense account and a decrease or a credit to an asset account. Unearned revenue is a liability account. It represents an obligation. When a company receives payment for services to be performed in a future accounting period, it increases or credits an unearned revenue account. The company has a performance obligation to perform a service to one of its customers. Items like airline tickets and customer deposits result in unearned revenues. Airlines such as United and Southwest treat receipts from the sale of tickets as unearned revenue until the flight service is provided. The company recognizes revenue when it performs the service. During the accounting period, it is not practical to make daily entries as the company performs services. Instead, the company delays recognition of revenue until the end of the accounting period. The company makes an adjusting entry to record the revenue for services performed during the period and to show the liability that remains at the end of the accounting period. The adjusting entry results in a decrease or a debit to a liability account and an increase or a credit to a revenue account. Sierra Corporation received $1,200 from a client for guided services expected to be completed by December 31st. Sierra's unearned service revenue, a liability account, shows a balance of $1,200 in the October 31st trial balance. Sierra performed $400 of the guided services to this client during the month of October. The liability unearned service revenue needs to decrease by $400 to show the balance of $800, which represents the remaining guided services Sierra is obligated to perform in the future. The other part of this transaction is to increase service revenue. The adjusting entry results in a decrease or a debit to unearned service revenue and an increase or a credit to service revenue. Companies record cash received before services are performed by increasing or crediting an unearned revenue account. The company makes an adjusting entry to record the revenue for services performed during the period and to show the liability that remains at the end of the accounting period. Prior to the adjustment, liabilities are overstated and revenues are understated. The adjusting entry for unearned revenues results in a decrease or a debit to a liability account and an increase or a credit to a revenue account. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in another file.